So now that I have kind of the base silhouette of the actual building created, I now need to turn this into real geometry so I can start using the Z modeler brush on it to create some further changes. So as you'll notice, I have polyframes active right now on the model, but the model is not being viewed in polyframe mode. And this is because all the geometry here right now is nano mesh geometry. So if I come over here and open up the nano mesh tab, you can see I still have nano mesh active for this tool. So I'm going to come up to the subtool palette first, and I want to make a duplicate version of this actual subtool. And this will allow me to revert back to that nano mesh if I need to make some changes later on. So I'm just going to come over here and click on duplicate, and now I have two subtools in my palette. So I only need to select one of these guys, so I'm going to select the duplicate version, and then I'm going to turn off the eyeball icon. So now I only have this subtool visible on my actual canvas. Now with this subtool visible, it is still in nano mesh mode. So I first need to convert this to real geometry. So I'm going to go to the geometry tab here, and I'm simply going to click on convert BPR to geo. This is going to take anything that would be rendered with BPR and then convert it to geometry. So just simply coming over here and clicking on this will convert both those nano mesh indexes on my model into true geometry. So now you can see with polyframe mode active, I now can see the actual polyframes on the actual model. So now the next thing I want to do is, since my model is true geometry now, I want to remove these bottom faces from the actual building here. Since I'm going to only be building the sides of the structure of this, I don't really need these bottom areas. So I'm just going to position the model to the side and turn off perspective, and then hold Control and Shift to get the select rectangle brush, and I'm just going to drag it out like so. And I just want to engulf the bottom edge of the actual buildings there. And then after I have them kind of engulfed, I'm just going to release, and now if I rotate my model a little, you'll see I just have those polygons isolated on the model. Now the rest of the building is hidden right now, so I'm only viewing the bottom polygons here. So next I want to flip the visibility on this so I get the building and not the bottom polygons. So I'm going to hold Control Shift again, and I'm just going to drag a box off in open space, and then I'm just going to release, and that will flip the visibility of my object. So now I'm left with the building, and as you can see those bottom faces now are now hidden. So after I have that done, I need to remove those bottom faces entirely from the model. So I want to delete the hidden geometry. So I'm going to go back over the geometry tab here, go to Modify Topology, and now do Delete Hidden. So now I'm just left with the building actual outside and not that actual bottom area. So this is more what we're looking for for the processes we're going to apply. So now I want to select the Z Modeler brush and then come through and start manipulating the geometry on this model. So maybe carve in some sections, round out some edges, do some other things to make it look a little more building-like. So I'm going to come up here again and make sure I have the Z Modeler brush selected. So just select that guy really quick. And now I'm going to hover over an edge. And while hovering over an edge, you'll notice by default it is set to Insert Edge Loop. So I can just simply click on the edge and insert edge loops on my actual model. So I'm going to come to the side here and just insert a few of these guys like so. And then maybe come to this guy and insert some as well. And then I'm just going to insert some areas here on the actual mesh, which is establishing these edges. Now after I have some of these guys established, I'm going to hover over a poly here. I'm going to hold spacebar to go into the Z Modeler Poly Action menu, and I'm going to select Q Mesh Mode. Now, if you just loaded up the Z Modeler brush, Q Mesh Mode is the default action, but if you were using it previously to create the Insert Nano Mesh action, you're going to have to hit spacebar to come in this menu and select Q Mesh again. Now, with Q Mesh selected, I can come through and now start manipulating areas of my model to generate some different effects. So I come through and add some kind of like indents to the building there, like so. I can come up to the top, and then as I'm hovering over an edge, add some edge loops again, so say something like this, and then maybe put a dent into the top, so a little area like that, and then maybe cut in some more up here, and maybe add some sort of little kind of air conditioning type unit or something at the very top of the building. And then I'll do something similar to this area here. So just simply coming in, adding some edge loops quickly, and then using the Z Modeler Q Mesh action to add some different functionality. Now, if you want to apply the Q Mesh action across multiple faces, you could come in and hold spacebar and select a different target, or you can hold Alt and drag, and this will give you a temporary polygroup here, which will apply the action to that area. So this white polygroup, now wherever I click with Q Mesh a single poly, will apply the action across that entire area. So this will allow you to come through and target different zones on your model, and then apply the Q Mesh action like so. 
Now on this back part here, I want to kind of round this out. So right now it's very kind of straight. So I'm going to first come in and add an insert an edge loop right in the center, something like that. And then I'm going to hover over one of these polys, and I'm going to press spacebar to go back in the Z Modeler Poly Action menu. And now I'm going to select the bridge action. And with the bridge action selected in the poly menu, I'm going to make sure I have connected polys active. Now the bridge connected polys action will allow me to come through and bridge two connected polys. So to use the bridge to connected polys, just simply hover over a poly. And as you're hovering over it, you'll notice a line will point to an actual edge. This will determine which direction the actual bridge function will take place. So I want to bridge these two polys through here, so I want to make sure as I'm hovering over this poly here, the line is actually pointing to this poly there. Now to apply the action, just simply click and drag. And as you're dragging in a horizontal motion, you'll change the actual elevation. And as you drag in a vertical motion, you'll change the resolution. Now if you have a precise resolution you want to actually control or a precise elevation, if you undo that and now hover over a poly again and press spacebar, you can come down here to the modifiers down here and you can actually set a specific resolution or a specific elevation on your actual model. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this interactive resolution to a specified resolution and I'm going to set this to something like 16. So I want 16 divisions around the actual bridge connect to polys there. So now if I return back to this area here and simply click and drag, you'll notice I can change the actual elevation still, but I won't be able to add any more resolution to that actual bridge action. So I'm going to set my elevation to something like that. So now that I have one of these kind of established, I could stop there, but I kind of want to continue this the rest of the way down. So to do this quick, I can actually come through and repeat the exact action that I just applied to other areas on my model. So simply hovering over this poly here and making sure I have that line pointing in the right direction and simply clicking will replay that last action. So now you can see I have that done exactly the same as it was done to the previous area. And then I can repeat this as well by just simply clicking again and now I have all those areas consistent across that area on my model. So now let's add a few more areas to the actual model here. So let's just come through here and add some edge loops here. And maybe some edge loops here. And then just pull this out a little bit. Switch back to the Q mesh action. Just add something like that. And then let's add some edge loops in here. And kind of Q mesh one of these faces. Add another little cut through there. And maybe we'll do this on both sides something like that. So that's looking pretty decent there. I'm going to come through and actually add a little more definition here, like so, and then maybe add this up just a little bit. So I got something a little more interesting happening on the top of the building there. Now I'm going to cut in kind of a access doorway for the entrance to this actual building. So I'm going to come down here and just cut in some edge loops quick. So cut one there, and then maybe cut one here, and one here. And I'm just going to Q mesh this in a little bit, like so. So I have that kind of little doorway established there. And then add some edge loops elsewhere on the model. So I'm going to go through now and just quickly add some loops to kind of square some of these items out to make sure I have kind of square topology everywhere. Because we're actually going to populate more details on the building using surface noise and we want to make sure we have even topology spread across the majority of our models, so square polygons uh, wherever possible. Now I can come through and do this manually by coming through and just inserting edge loops like so, or I can hover over an edge loop and press spacebar. And with the edge action selected, I can come down here to the target and select multiple edge loops. And now if I come across an edge and simply click and drag, I can actually add multiple edge loops to areas, so something like this. And this will allow me to come through and kind of generate squares geometry on the model a little bit quicker than coming through and cutting out each of the individual edge loops uh, separately. So it's coming through like this. And just make sure when you're actually using this one, you're actually clicking and dragging. Even if you want to actually just insert a single edge loop, you want to make sure you click and drag. And if you add too many, just undo and then come back and just add a single one. Let's come through and do this, like so. It's just making sure I have somewhat even resolution 
on my model. It doesn't have to be exact, so just somewhere close. Like that, and then let's add one there and one here. And then we're gonna hit these guys up as well. So there we go, now we have a nice kind of even flow of topology on the building there. Now if you do any kind of Q-mesh actions on your model, you may end up with base polygons again, so this polygon right here. So I want to make sure I remove those as well, so I'm just going to hold Control and Shift to make sure I have that select rectangle brush selected, and I'm going to come across the bottom, and then release, and that's going to isolate those parts like this. And then I'm going to hold Control Shift again, and flip the actual visibility on that and then come over here and do that delete hidden again. So now I'm just left with the upper portions of the building and all the bottom faces should be removed. Now right now I have kind of a crazy polygrouping going on because I was doing a lot of those insert uh, edge loops there. So I want to just come through now and just kind of unify all the polygrouping based on actual face angle. So I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and locate the actual polygroups tab here and open that up. And then I'm going to come through here and click on Groups by Normal. So this is going to look at the actual angle of every single face to the face next to it, and then apply a new polygrouping to that area. So you can see here, after I click that button, you'll see I'll get a new polygrouping kind of established to all the areas that are broken up by harsh edges. So this is looking pretty good here. And this will come into play here in a minute after we want to kind of change or affect some areas on a model easily using the actual polygroup function. So that is the building there that has been stylized and changed a little bit using the Z Modeler brush. Yeah.